Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing the McNamara test in Excel. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this worksheet fictitious data I'll be using for this example, and I have an ID variable here, and there's 50 records recorded here, and a pretest and a post test. So let's assume that the participants in this study are counselors. And there's a particular counseling theory that on pretest, they either support or do not support. And then they're exposed to information like a training session about that theory. And the same participants are measured again on a post test. Again, either they support the theory or they do not support it. So here, a zero represents no support for the theory, and a one represents support. So each variable here is dichotomous, and there's two variables. So this is a two by two. So in this situation, we may choose to use a McNamara test. McNamara test can only have two variables. They need to be related, so the same participant taking a test twice, and it needs to be two levels for the first test and two levels for the second test, two by two. So a McNamara test will tell you if you have a significant difference between the pretest and post-test results. So in this case, we'd be answering the question, was there a significant change in support? So we're attempting to measure the effect of the counseling training that's designed to provide the counselors more information about the theory. So as we look at these two variables, we realize in this design, with two variables, each variable having two levels, there's only three possible outcomes either the counselor doesn't change their type of support, meaning they go from no support and continue not supporting from pretest to post-test, as in this example, or go from supporting and continuing to support, as in this example. So that's no change. That's one possibility. Another possibility is the counselor did not support the theory to begin with, but then they support it on the post-test, so that's no support to support, which I have over here in green. And then the third possibility would be to go from supporting the theory, and then after the training, not supporting it, as in the case with this record. Support for pretest, no support on post-test. So we can measure this here in column D by taking the pretest and subtracting the post-test. So it'll be equal sign pretest minus post-test. And we can see for this first result we have negative one because we had no support for pretest and support for post-test. If I autofill this down, we have the three possibilities being displayed. We have support to no support, that's a one. No change is a zero. And of course, negative one is no support to support. So using the negative one, zero, and one values here, we can count the no support to support change and the support to no support change. So in column G2, we'll start with no support to support. This will be equal sign. I'm going to use count if. And the range here for count if will be D2 all the way through D51. And I'm going to use the same range in the cell below. So I'm going to hit F4 and make that an absolute reference. The criteria in this case, because we're looking at a counselor that did not support the theory and then moved to support the theory, this is a negative one we're looking for. So it's going to be quotation mark equal sign negative one quotation mark. 
So there's 21 instances here in these data that demonstrate a counselor not supporting the theory, being exposed to the training, and then on the post-test supporting the theory. That happened 21 times. To look at the moving from supporting the theory category to not supporting it, I'm just going to autofill the cell above down to the cell and change the negative one to one. And we have five. So five counselors support the theory, but then after learning more about the theory, attending the training session, they did not support it afterward. So 21 and 5. So now we can calculate the test statistic I have labeled here chi-square and this is going to include the Yates correction. So this will be the test statistic for the McNamara test. Correction here will be equal sign parenthesis ABS then I'm going to take cell G2 value 21 and subtract cell G3, 5. So absolute value of the difference, the two values, minus 1, and then I'm going to square that. Shift 6 for the caret symbol, and 2. I'm going to divide this by 21 plus 5. So that's the function for the test statistic. Hit enter. We can see the value is 8.65. Next I'm going to enter the alpha. For the social sciences, oftentimes the alpha value is set to 0.05 or 5%. So I'm going to use that in this case. So that's 0.05. Next I want to calculate the critical value so I can compare the test statistic to the critical value. This is going to be equal sign chi inv. This returns the inverse of the right-tailed probability of the chi-square distribution. The probability, in this case alpha, 0 0.05. And for the degrees of freedom, just one degree of freedom here. The critical value is 3.84. So in this instance, we can see that the test statistic at 8.65 is greater than the critical value. So we would reject the null hypothesis. In this case, we would say there is a statistically significant difference between the pretest and post-test scores. We can also calculate the p-value associated with the test statistic. So this will be equal sign CHI sq.dist.rt. So this function returns the right-tailed probability of the chi-square distribution. The value x here, the first argument, will be the chi-square value from up here, the test statistic value, 8.65. And again, we're using one degree of freedom. So we can see the p-value associated with the test statistic value is 0.00326. So there's only a 0.326% chance that we could have made these observations through random error alone if the null hypothesis were true. I hope you found this video on calculating the McNamara test in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.